Welcome back to Documentary First, an inside look at a documentary filmmaker's journey. Joining us is our filmmaker, Christian Taylor. Hi, everybody. And, Jason. and I'm Jason Rugg, filling in for Josh Lindsay. Um, so actually, this this week, we, we were going to record last week and some stuff happened. We had to reshuffle our schedules and, and we actually are putting a hold on our voiceover uh, episode because we had some some minor updates happen. So Christian, do you just want to jump right into it? Yeah, I'm going to dive right in. This is going to be a short podcast today just because of what's been happening. Uh, I want to give you an update on uh, Grueling Glory, which is our short that's in its festival run right now. Um, today, as we're recording, is April 4th. So it is currently in the Sarasota Film Festival, which is an online festival. Um, but by the time you're hearing this, that festival will be over and we will be on to our next one, which is at the Julian Dubuque International Film Festival. That'll be on April 20th through 24th. I will be there in person. So if you're listening to this and you're anywhere near Dubuque, Iowa, please come watch the film. I'd love to meet you. And uh, so that's what's happening with Grueling Glory. It still has a bunch of festivals that we have to hear back from. It has been getting rejected from a lot of festivals um, and our acceptance rate right now is hovering around 22% which isn't bad. I think the Girl Who Wore Freedom's festival acceptance rate was around 23%. So we're sort of right in the ballpark of that. And I'll keep you updated on, on what's happening with that. Again, if you are um, interested in joining us on Patreon in our little Patreon community, you'll be able to watch it for free whenever you join. So I think that's at the $5 level. And we'd love to have you in our community as we start building these new projects. So a uh, great way to, great time to join Patreon. I want to talk to you about the Brave Dutch. The Brave Dutch uh, is a project that we have been talking about doing um, on uh, John Lau, who was the down fighter pilot that was shot down April 29th, 44 in Holland. Uh, that project we sketched out as a 10-part documentary series. And I think I've mentioned this before, but uh, Virgil Films, our distributor on that project, was shopping it around to get upfront money. That uh, has not happened to this point. We're thinking we need to retool it into a documentary. So we're going to set that aside for a little bit while I talk with my team and we regroup and figure out what we're going to do next. So that's what's happening with the Brave Dutch. And then the Carenton project, um, we did have a lot of sort of reorganization of this idea this past week. We started talking with our French team. Team. We are going to bring on a French production company to work with us over there. And uh, Zach Callahan, our writer, has really been digging into some old footage that we have of Carenton residents that we interviewed in 2018, as well as some old um, archival footage that he thinks we can use in the making of this uh, documentary or sizzle reel. Uh, again, our hope is that we can record when we go to Normandy in June and make a sizzle reel to raise funds for that project and, you know, so we can get to work on that project. So that's what's happening with the Carenton project. All the rest of my time over the last two weeks um, has been taken up with uh, this whole other issue. Um, so now we're going to dive into where the girl who wore freedom is today. You ready for this, Jason? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've gotten a little bit of a preview, but I really want to hear how this, how this shook out. Yeah. So it's been a really hard week for me, and I hope you'll indulge me, Jason. I'm going to talk about the emotional side of it um, yeah. as well, because we are filmmakers, we're storytellers, and at the bottom, we're emotional people. So there's no way that uh, what's happened in the last two weeks is not going to affect me. Um but the truth of the matter is um, our distribution agreement is now dissolved and we do not have distribution. So um, that has been a heartbreaking decision. It came not because it was something that we wanted, but our hand was forced because as I mentioned on the podcast before, our distributors have not been paying us in a timely manner um, or really at all. Uh, so that situation just could not be continued. It was like being in an abusive relationship where, um, you know, people weren't answering your emails or doing what they said they would do and all the while saying, you know, treating you nicely, but, you know, but not rightly. I should coin that. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's what's happening. That's what's been happening. So, um, I've been going back and forth with the business people on my team. Everybody's met them before, Ben Fife and Hunter Taylor and um, 
David Patterson, as well as our lawyer, John Scanlon, who's been on the podcast as well, and trying to figure out the best way to handle the situation of non-payment. And this, this is where we had to go. Um, and at the bottom, it's because we were losing so many, you know, the opportunity costs were, were so great. Um, and, but there is no joy in this situation, you know, having to do this. And it feels terrible. And for two weeks, my insides were in knots, you know, in trying to make this decision. Um, because, oh, geez, I don't want to cry, but it's just impossible not to. Because what it feels like is, you know, there are, there's so much work that not only I did, but so many people did over the course of five years. Um, and it was exciting to think that the world was going to see that. Although, um, in truth, it was very difficult for anyone to see our film, particularly in the U.S., because it was only on iTunes. Um, but you know there is money generated um, based on the comments that we had on iTunes, based on what everybody says to us and the emails we get. Um, so people were buying and renting the film on iTunes, and that money was going into the distributor's pocket. Um, there was the Delta deal that Virginie Durr helped me land, but in the end, I brought it to FFS as a deal. And we were paid $6,000 for that, um, that we've never seen. Um, Virginia Durr helped us land the Air France deal. So that was another deal that I bought, brought to this distributor. Um, and so by breaking that agreement, um, it makes it incredibly difficult to probably recoup any of that money. So that was a decision I had to make of, you know, was I gonna just throw all that away? You look like you have a question. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm wondering if now, since you have the the dissolution of this agreement, um, do you have to go then renegotiate those deals with Delta and no everybody? So basically, okay. yeah, basically what happens is you know the deals are you typically struck by the distributor, um, but in this instance, like with Delta, I did bring the deal to the distributor. The distributor just fulfilled it you know, sent out an invoice and received payment. And wow. so, um, so now Delta has the movie and runs it for as long as that agreement. If it has to be renegotiated again, it'll either be with me or it will be with, if we get another distributor. So, but the hard part was in breaking this agreement is that there are some teeth in the agreement. If you're in the agreement about, uh, you know, when they should pay you, but really, um, so I had to decide, you know, uh, are the opportunity costs that I'm losing, is that outweigh the money that I may lose? Um, and there were, um, there are things in there, like, for example, I can request an audit that goes in and looks at their books and if there's underpayment of five percent which of course there would be because they haven't paid me for two quarters um then they would have to pay for the audit and then they would be compelled to pay but even if you know what if they say they don't have the money and you know is that lost forever what if they uh, and then do i have to get a lawyer involved i mean that that ultimately escalates costs there's risk involved there um all of that's very unknown you know wow that's awful. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty terrible. And you know what the saddest thing was for me, which is silly, it didn't hit me till afterwards. So we asked them to immediately take down our um, property, um, which they said they couldn't do. Um, and then, I don't know, in the same day said, it's down from iTunes. So they did take it down from iTunes. Um, and only then did I realize that I didn't screenshot or save all the reviews that people left. Mm. So those were just gone, you know? And um, so that was heartbreaking. Um, and uh, I don't know, there is definitely this sense, even though it's not true, that there's a sense of failure there. And I think what's super hard for me is that 
I, I have so many people that work so hard um, and so many people that do want to see the film that now are not able to. And um, I have so many people that I need to pay that I can or bills to pay that I can't. So for example, in order for us to use the film anymore, we have to pay $2,000 for five years to use the one little song that's in the film for a minute. Um, I don't have that, you know, I don't have money to pay my bookkeeper next week or, you know, my CPA to do my taxes, stuff like that. Um, it's really rocking because you hope as a filmmaker that you uh, can make money from your work and at least break even or pay your bills or whatever. And, um, and the other thing that's frustrating, Jason, is that we did our due diligence with this distributor. Yeah. We talked with other filmmakers, we, you know, researched them, we prayed about it, and there was really no way to predict this situation uh, in that, in that beginning time. So, so needless to say, like everything else, I have learned a lot as a first time filmmaker through this process, um, and in consultation with my attorney. <laughs> we have decided to do a three-part series on distribution, uh, and in particular, just sharing my own uh, my own experience. It's not everybody's experience; it's my experience, uh, and perhaps people can learn from that. And uh, we've decided we're going to give one letter uh, at the end of every episode, and uh, of the our name of our distributor. And at the very end, we will tell everybody the name of our distributor. And we'll talk through the nuts and bolts of everything that's happened because um, distribution is a big black hole for most filmmakers. And I really feel like that's unfair in our industry. And people need to, to have a, an, you know, I think it's important to lift up the hood. Let's look in there and see what we can learn. So. Yeah, so we'll get more into the details of that in the coming weeks. That's why we're pausing the voiceover discussion at the moment. Yeah. I will say at the start of this, I did not realize how sad this was going to become. I was I was a lot more like, okay, I'm interested to hear the drama of how this played out and everything. I didn't realize that it was um, going to turn into just how sad it is that you people were on your team who wound up not actually being on your team. Yeah, and I didn't realize it was going to be so sad either. But anytime I start to talk about it recently, you know, there are emotions yeah. involved in this project. And I, it's just like oh, any yeah. other, you know, thing, I guess. I just, I didn't even realize how deep it went and how much it was going to affect the film at this point. Um, wow. Yeah, I guess I'm really glad that we're going to do this series about distribution then because yeah. people need to know what to look out for yeah i mean it what's hard too is you can't say oh yeah go see my film on because it's nowhere yeah. yeah um and we're gonna have to figure that out we are gonna have to try to get new distribution we'll see but yeah. um if that doesn't happen then i'm not sure what we'll do we'll have to figure out some new way for this film to be seen i mean fortunately we do have some exciting events coming up in may and june uh and you know, I can still take this film anywhere and do a theatrical screening and a Q&A, and I feel like that's the best way the film plays anyway, um, is to just see it in person with other people. So that will be an ongoing thing that we can do with the film that I hope to do. I care about educating others, and I love to travel and meet new people, so that's definitely one thing that we can do with the film, and we are going to make DVDs. Um, we were in the process, the, the distributor was okaying our artwork for the use of the DVDs. Now we'll have to go back and redo our artwork. Um, right. So that'll, you know, take us a little bit longer to get those DVDs made. So, yeah, so that's where we are. Wow. I'm really sorry. Thanks. I appreciate that. So if you're listening uh, and if you're a praying person, you can pray that we will find new distribution uh, with a, a, a better group of people who um, will not just treat you nicely, but treat you rightly. Um, and, you know, keep following. Again, it is a journey. Anytime people say 
<laughs> what more is there to learn? There's always more to learn from this first time experience. So thanks for being along for the ride, everybody. And Jason, I really appreciate you too. Well, we all appreciate you. And we're, I think I, I speak for a lot of people that are just really thankful for your openness about a lot of these things. Like a lot of people wouldn't want to talk about this publicly. A lot yeah, of it's people kind of would. embarrassing. It, it feels like a personal failure, but it's not because yeah. they, <laughs> they're the ones who, who, uh, who caused the problem here, but yeah. Isn't that weird? Yeah. That, that's it's, so weird. Yeah. You just, you automatically kind of blame yourself because, oh, I should have seen that coming. And, um, but I, I really, I thank you for your vulnerability um, in, in sharing this and just know that I don't blame you at all. <laughs> I don't think thank most you. of us will. Thank you. Um, well, I appreciate your support and everybody else that listens and those people that support us on Patreon, you're a small and mighty crowd. Uh, and you have been so encouraging to me because there is faithfulness there each month and that's going to help us you know, in this little transitional period, just kind of keep things going. It isn't enough for sure um, to pay our bills every month, but um, it's, it's something and it does help. So I want to say thank you for that. And if you're listening and you haven't joined us on Patreon, there are many reasons to join us there. It's not just uh, to help support great work, but uh, there are videos there. There's Christian's Guide to Normandy that you can download. There is Grueling Glory that you can watch. We try to do a live stream once a month and you can talk and ask, you know, ask me questions anytime. Uh, so, and we're going to be adding perks all the time for people that join our community. So, uh, so think about it. We'd love to have you. I love to get to know people that support us. So that's what that little community is for. Well, awesome. All right. Do you have anything else you want to cover? No, I think we're good for today. We'll just uh, do this three-part documentary series starting next week. Uh, it'll sort of be a, a limited series. Did I just say three-part documentary series? It'll be a limited podcast series uh, starting next week. And then we'll pick up with voiceover um, the following week after that. All right. Well, thanks everybody for listening to Documentary First, where we believe everyone has a story to tell and you can be the one to tell it. Yes, you can. Bye, everybody. Thank you for listening to Documentary First. We really appreciate your partnership with us. We can't do any of this without you. So thank you for listening, donating, and following along on our journey. We are supported by generous donations from people just like you. To make a donation, visit thegirlwhowarefreedom.com. Or support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash documentary first. To learn more about our other works in progress, visit documentaryfirst.com or follow Documentary First on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. This podcast was produced by Documentary First, edited and mixed by Jason Hoban, with music by Jeff.